Yes. Yeah, today is a demo meeting, uh, and we will present our achievements for our 1817 sprint. And uh, today we plan to provide two demos from Indie Node team and two demos from Indie SDK team. So we started the recording. So the first demo is uh, from Natalia Drachova. And uh, Natalia, could you show your demo? Sure. Hi, everyone. Do you hear me well? Yeah, yeah. You need to share your screen. Yep. I just tried to do that, but it says I need your approval for that. Yeah. It says I cannot start screen share while the other participant is sharing. Okay, thank you. And you should see a graph now. Yes, right? I can see. Okay, this is, um, okay, I'll start. As uh, you may know, we use load scripts to for our testing, for our performance testing, and the only load script we had previously, it was only for stable load. So you can see uh, here as an example, it's a graph built on metrics, and we only could do like, let's say, 10 transactions per second, or 100, or maybe more, maybe less, but every time it was just one number of transactions per second per script. Uh, this is not enough for our goals, so we plan to develop a script which will have spikes, spike load, and I'm not sure if I do see the new graph or the old one. I'm not sure how to I think you have to share the whole uh, screen, the whole desktop, not only just one window. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I just have two monitors, so now you can see the new graph. It has spikes. You can see that um, here um, the reading transactions and uh, writing transactions and they come together as a spike. And so we can do as many spikes as we want to check different situations. Just for instance, uh, we had a problem with false positive use state, which happened after spikes. And so now we can see that uh, that problem has gone as in validator info file we saw no V changes, no false positive V changes or any V changes at all when we made our load testing with spikes. Also, there is another one mode for this script and it has background reading transactions uh, load. So it means that for uh, during the test, uh, during the test execution, there will be like one one hundred or more, whatever you define, reading transactions per second, <coughs> like a background form load. And along with that, we have our spikes, which uh, are re uh, writing transactions, and uh, they simulate like something we will have in production when there will be a lot of reading and sometimes there will be spikes of writing. And this is it. And do you have any questions? What are our final results? Final results are, let me show you. There were two tests with defined parameters, like we have to have no failures and no false positive view changes when we do a lot of testing with 10 writes per second spikes and 100 reads per second background load and it was done. The test took two hours. There were six spikes and no failures, no view changes. And we got 
almost everything we uh, expected to send to be sent to our pool um, successfully received all of the writing and reading transactions and for the second scenario where uh, this was sorry this was spike scenario and the same for permanent scenario so everything went good and we also can uh, run this script again and again when we have some modifications when we have to check whether our performance improved or not and so on it's in our indie node repository and everyone can use it For, i think it's pretty simple let me show you it has a config file in yaml format and here you can provide the parameters for the mode of script like it would be permanent background load along with reading spikes or it will be just spikes reading and writing or anything else uh, here you can define how much time it will take for overall test for every spike for intervals between spikes and uh, these parameters are from the first load script we use so my script just uh, runs another one load script with different parameters that's how we get those spikes and we can do many other things. Thank you. Thank you for the demo and for the great results and uh, improvements of uh, our load testing. Uh, yeah, so I suggest to move to the next uh, demo for, from Ingenio team. Uh, it will be done by Sergey S. And uh, it will... Um, Provide more details about the issue that Natalia already mentioned. This is an issue with false positive uh, view changes. So we did a fix this print. Uh, that's why uh, the Natalia's tests uh, uh, verified this and got these quite smooth results. And Sergey will, uh, will present you the details about the issue and the fix. Hi, could you see my screen? Yes. yes. Uh, I'm going to describe uh, you and your strategy uh, of throughput management measurement uh, that um, tries to decrease the probability of false positive uh, uh, master degradation event and uh, following uh, view change. So the problem is described uh, in this picture. Um, as you can see, we have for example, master re replica and backup replica. Um, and uh, at the start, we have a normal load. Uh, it may occur several windows, uh, and uh, uh, once the load falls to zero. Uh, each uh, time window, we cal calculate uh, exponential moving average value. So during several uh, empty windows, uh, our EMA value uh, also falls to near zero. Uh, and then if we uh, have a big batch, for example, uh, when master of uh, um, backup replica was disconnected for a few seconds, uh, we have a big, a big batch of transactions and uh, we have a spike uh, at the edge of the two uh, neighboring windows and for example backup replica uh, processes uh, this batch at the first window and the master replica processes the second window and at uh, the edge of these windows we have a false positive master degradation event and then uh, false positive exchange occurred to, to deal with the, this situation, uh, we implemented a new strategy uh, based on uh, state machine. Uh, as you can see at the new picture, uh, for example, we have a backup replica uh, and normal load. Uh, during normal load, we are in the normal state and uh, exponential moving average is calculated uh, 
in the same way is the previous strategy. Uh, then load, load uh, turns to zero, and uh, uh, after uh, the first uh, empty window, we fall into idle state, and after mean uh, count of empty windows, we fall into faded state. Uh, during these states, um, exponential over average value is calculated uh, uh, with uh, zero, and uh, Mm, it also falls near zero value, but when we have a spike, uh, we have uh, the first uh, non-empty window, we uh, uh, go into revival state. Revival, uh, at this state, uh, uh, state machine occur, uh, occurs uh, during maintenance uh, of non-empty windows. And uh, when we uh, go from uh, revival state to normal state, we uh, calculate uh, accumulated uh, processed uh, transactions as an average load dispersed in revival windows. So uh, this spike that uh, at this picture uh, is smoothed and then uh, no uh, any false positive change occurred. Uh, this situation, we implemented several tests uh, for such situation, uh, and uh, for example, you can see one of the simplest of them, of them here, and uh, we can try to execute it. At, at this test, we have a situation when uh, after several um, empty windows, we have a spike in uh, neighboring windows. And the first, firstly, uh, the spike is processed on backup replica, and uh, in the second window, uh, this spike is processed on uh, master replica, and we can see that no master degradation is detected. Um, so that's all. Do you have any questions? Uh, yes, I have one short question. Uh, probably it's not uh, uh, directed at this very strategy, but uh, it, it directed at all class of such strategies of smoothing uh, spikes. Uh, what if uh, we have a malicious primary uh, that uh, orders uh, requests uh, by spikes, but uh, uh, but waits for spikes from backups and uh, orders less requests than backups. Uh, as far as I can understand, this uh, strategy will smooth both spikes, both spikes but uh, total number requests of ordered on master instance will be less than on backup and it could go unnoticed. Do we have a test for this case uh, and do we have some ideas how to mitigate this? Um, I think yes. Uh, maybe I cannot find the exact test because uh, there are many, many tests for different situations. Uh, but uh, I think that we can rely on exponential move and average features uh, to deal with such situation. Uh, maybe it's a question of uh, more discussions, but uh, generally I don't see the problem here. I think, but we can discuss it. So, what do you think? So, yes. thank any you. other questions? Okay, thank you. Next demo will be presented by Artem Ivanov. And he will uh, describe a new feature.
of FreeBND, supporting of opening wallets uh, with uh, just raw key without key derivation and a new API call uh, for generation of raw keys for supporting wallet. Artyom? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as Slava told, my demo is related to LibreBND wallet. Uh, on the last demo showcase, I described about changes in wallet credentials. Uh, recently, we got a bug report that uh, it takes significant time to uh, perform wallet registrations. Uh, and to solve this problem, we introduced uh, uh, additional key derivation method, method uh, ergon to interactive mode. Uh, this uh, key derivation method solves the, the problem of mobile team, uh, uh, but it didn't solve the problem of different teams. For example, uh, recently we get a bug report from uh, agency backend team, uh, then in case, in case of multiple parallel requests to the uh, at it, it, it still takes significant time, uh, even this uh, interactive key derivation method. So to solve this, we supported uh, a third uh, key derivation method row. Uh, by using this uh, type, uh, we can skip the derivation of wallet master, master key. Uh, and provide row K. Uh, I would like to notice that the Wallet Master Secret K has uh, some limitations. Uh, it uh, must be a base piece at was uh, base 58 <laughs> string <laughs> uh, and it uh, can be 32 bytes length. Uh, so to generate a uh, acceptable uh, key, we added new wallet API function in generate wallet key. Uh, this function accepts one parameter config JSON. Its parameter is optional. It contains uh, one field. Uh, one field uh, seed. Uh, this uh, we can use this seed to generate a uh, deterministic key. Uh, it's uh, only for testing. Uh, it's not recommended for real use cases. Uh, so when we call this function, we get a wallet key uh, specific uh, acceptable for as a wallet operation and we can pass it to create opening and close and delete function uh, so this uh, this key derivation method solved the problem of agency backend and that's it Does anyone have any questions to Artyom? If not, no questions. Yeah, if not, then let's uh, ask Sergey to present us uh, the last demo about the uh, wallet benchmarking. Yeah, I believe Sergey will show us how performance with raw keys was improved. Okay. Thank you, Slava, Alex. Let me show my screen. Mm. This one. Okay. Uh, in this sprint, we have added some benchmarks for our default word implementation, and um, especially for uh, to compare our key generation methods. 
um, some helpful functionality of standard Rust benchmarks are available only in um, nightly builds, so we use special crate criterion for benchmarking in, uh, in this decay. Um, uh, this crate allows to define benchmarks, uh, uh, collects different statistics, and um, um, compare performance of different builds, for example. Uh, let me show usage of this um, benchmark. Uh, it's default uh, cargo common bench, and uh, I would like to specify a uh, group of benchmarks for open wallet. Um, it's running now, but I can show you my previous results. And uh, you can see, for example, average time for a wallet open operation uh, in different modes. For moderate mode, it took about one second. For interactive modes, it's about 200 milliseconds. And uh, uh, for uh, raw mode, K deviation, it's uh, significantly faster. Uh, it's only microseconds. Uh, also, this framework shows some uh, possible ch performance changes uh, against previous run. So you can see there is no change performance for moderate mode or interactive mode, but uh, you can see some difference for raw mode. I think it's just because it's too fast operation and um, as I run this test yeah. on my machine with uh, active zoom, uh, recording, etc. It's not actually a fair test for this, but still uh, significantly faster other modes, for example. Mm. Uh, now you can see our benchmarks for wallet. It's grouped uh, by operation types. Uh, so we have um, benchmarks for creation, open, for the close and deleting, for edit records, for um, tags, for search records. Uh, I can't run all this test uh, because it took about uh, 20 minutes, but you can see progress uh, for open operation. Uh, and uh, for example, now I have uh, less load on my computer, so you can see some improvement in performance. That's it from my side. Thank you, Sergey. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Uh, Sergey, does this framework support any visualization of results? Yes, uh, if uh, we are waiting for finish my current run, I can show the um, GNU plot output. Or let me find some cached result. You already stopped sharing your screen, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you see my screen now? Yes. Uh, here's... Um, some cached result on my machine. Uh, you can see average time and uh, time distribution for operation. So you can see uh, changes between different runs. And uh, also there are some additional plots and statistics here. That's all. Thank you. Do we plan to use this uh, benchmark in CI or in some uh, acceptance step of new releases? I think it's an open question because uh, for regular job in CI it may be too expensive. Uh, but as one of step acceptance criteria, it may be very helpful for our test procedure. Thank you. Thank you, so we're a bit out of time, but let's use the uh, last couple minutes uh, on uh, uh, seeing 
the status of the current sprints and plans uh, for the next sprint. Uh, let's start with Indie, Indie node. Uh, so this is our current sprint, and as you can see, uh, the current sprint, we fixed a number of uh, stability and few change issues, as well as we extended load testing, uh, load script, and did a lot of uh, load testing, exploratory testing. Uh, in particular, we identified a number of uh, performance issues and uh, even fixed uh, some performance issues in addition to stability one. And technically, we are ready to create the next uh, stable release, the next service pack. Uh, it's scheduled to be done uh, next Wednesday. I mean, verification uh, uh, is planned to be ready by next uh, Wednesday, September 5th. Uh, as for the um, uh, next sprint, which uh, will start tomorrow, uh, it will uh, contain the uh, release of the service pack, uh, as well as continuation of working on more stability fixes, performance uh, fixes, uh, as well as uh, improvements to load script and uh, load and exploratory testing. Uh, so that's basically what's uh, for the Indie Node team. Slava, would you like to share something regarding Indie SDK? Yeah, I will share my screen. Um, we finished a lot of uh, bug fixes that were requested by uh, teams uh, uh, that use uh, Indie SDK and uh, we issued uh, one service pack release and one service pack release is uh, already created but uh, and we plan to validate it tomorrow and also uh, move it to done uh, step and uh, the same situation with a uh, few tickets to validate. We have a lot of tickets uh, in review but uh, all these tickets are related to new feature about uh, better logging in Libindi. Uh, these tickets are done and uh, code is already reviewed and prepared to merge. Uh, but uh, due CI issues, because it was uh, uh, used to creation of new release, they are still in a review state, but we plan to merge it uh, tomorrow and uh, move to done uh, status up. Yeah, we have one bug, but uh, we are a bit blocked because we need uh, some additional input from bug requester and for now can't move efficiently on this bug. Yeah, in our next backlog, uh, we don't plan to start uh, big new features. And uh, uh, except uh, integration of uh, Indie CLI, oh sorry, of VCX library into uh, Indie SDK project. And also we plan to work on uh, some enhancement performance, stability, and uh, but the main goal of the next sprint will be uh, continue integrate of libvcx uh, uh, to Indie SDK code repository. That's all. Okay, so thank you for everyone for attending our demo. If anyone uh, has any questions, it's time to ask. Thank you, Sean, for positive feedback. So, if no questions, let's close the meeting and thank you.